paraphrase this, the Pharisees said, God, you are so lucky to have me on your team. You are so lucky that, that, that you should just bless me and should give me whatever I want. But the response of the tax collector was, God, thank you for having me. I am so totally undeserving. The tax collector was broken. The Pharisee was useless because he wasn't broken. Which do you think God honored? Well, Jesus does said it, say it. It is not the proud, but the broken that God will honor. There's two types of brokenness. The first type is the brokenness of surrender. It's an attitude of saying, Lord, I am willing to let you do whatever you will with my life as long as you get the glory. You have to realize that, that you have a need for him. And then the second one is the brokenness of circumstances. Sometimes life happens. Sometimes things happen in our lives that will create a, a brokenness inside of us. And the difference between these two brokenness is our foundation. In Matthew 7, 24, 6, it's the story of the, the two builders who built their uh, houses on the rock or the sand. It says, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against his house, that house. Yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. There's two tips of, of foundation. The first type is the rock. The rock of Jesus Christ, the rock that we can rely upon, the rock that we can trust, and the second one is the sand. The sand is ourselves. Our, we, we become self-made. We become self-centered. My question is, what, what is your life built upon? Is your life built upon a relationship? If you are married, your life should not be built on that marriage, but your life should be built on uh, Jesus Christ. Is your life built on what you do? Sometimes as men, we build our life on, on, on what we do as, uh, as a vocation. Our life should be built on Jesus Christ. Is your life built on, on being the, the biggest and the best? Our life should be built on the foundation, the rock of Jesus Christ. Is your life built on your pride of who you are? If it is, then you are like the builder who builds his house in the sand. When the storms of life came and blew across his house, everything was totally demolished. Everything was wiped away. Everything fell apart in his house. Sometimes God allows us to hit rock bottom in, for, in order for us to discover that he is the rock at the bottom. Let me get something straight real quick. God does not cause things to happen for us to break, but God will allow things to happen in our lives for us to break. I want you to get that, and, and, and for the rest of the sermon, I want, I, I want you to understand that God will not cause things for you to break. He will allow things to happen to us, for us to break. God uses our brokenness. A life of brokenness, a life of surrender, is a life like the man who built his house on the rock. A life that is fulfilled in its purpose for Jesus Christ. Just like the seed just like a seed has to be broken in order for the plant to grow. Just like the egg has to be broken in order for the chick to come out and to be born. What if the seed and the egg refused to be broken? Then that which was inside of it would die. Like I said, we raised chickens and, and, and we, we had a brooder house. And sometimes a chicken will be fully grown, ready to hatch, and for some reason just couldn't get out. The egg refused to be broken and the, the, the chicken inside would have died, w did die. The seed has to go into the ground and be broken for it to grow. What if in our lives, in our relationship with Jesus Christ, if we refuse to be broken, the thing that is within inside of us, that relationship that we have that is alive, if we refuse to be broken, will in a sense die. They're very much in its place. 
we begin to lose our focus. We begin to lose our passion. We begin to lose our purpose. Brokenness is a daily work of a loving God who strips us of self-sufficiency so that Christ's character can shine through us. Brokenness is a daily adventure that we must go through. We must rip ourselves up of our self-centeredness. Within our brokenness, Christ's character can shine through us. To be honest with you guys, I suffer with pride. That, that is my sin. It is pride. I, I, I have to be right. Uh, I'm, not very, I'm not wrong very often. Just ask my wife. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, 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 I do. I suffer with pride. I, I suffer, and I, it's not that I blame my, my dad and my grandpa, but both of them are, are prideful people, and so I've learned. I've learned... Uh, to be prideful in my life. But there are times when God has to break me of that. When he says, Virgil, you are too prideful, and I'm going to put you through a process of breaking you. I can tell you two times right off the bat where God began to break me. One Thursday night, sitting right there on those steps, totally devastated of an event that happened in the youth group. And God communicate to me that, that I built my foundation on the youth group, that, that like a, a man who, who builds his uh, foundation on his vocation, I had done that. And, and God re- began to break me. And it took all night on the Thursday night prayer meeting, if you guys don't go to prayer meeting, 8.30, prayer meeting to begin to break me, to make me to who he wanted me to be as a pastor. And it was then, after he broke me, that he gave me the vision that I now begin to see in the teens. He began to give me a, a passion for the teens that I now begin to see inside of the teens. The second time was over here. It was a communion service. And uh, my family, and, and again, my, the work with the youth was attacked by a, a person. And... Uh, I, I could not take communion that day until God broke me. And let me tell you, it wasn't until after the service when a lot of people had left this, this sanctuary where God had to break me of, of my prideful sin in order for me to, to take communion that day. What, what, what would our attitudes be if we allow God to break us when he spoke to us? It was in that moment that God began to do something wonderful inside of me. I want you guys to take a look at some pictures for a second. These are pictures of some beautiful mosaics. Some of these mosaics come in the cathedrals of Europe. And some of them are the wonderful mosaics of the ancient cities that have been uncovered throughout the years. It is not, these these mosaics are not one huge piece. A mosaic is several different pieces of broken pottery. The, the ones we see today are, are, are ones of small tile, but the, the, the very first ones that were built were those of broken pottery. Somebody saw a broken pot and said, that's not a broken pot, that's something that I can use to make something beautiful out of. And it's when God sees us broken that he begins to put us back the way he wants us to be. And that we begin to... God begins to work inside of us and he doesn't see our brokenness anymore. He sees our wholeness and begins to make our life whole again. I want you guys to take Moses, for example. Moses was, like myself, a very prideful person. He was very prideful in Egypt. He was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He was schooled in the highest schools of Egypt. But it wasn't until he was a shepherd in the deserts of Midian Midian, that he was broken and that God could begin to use him. You notice that uh, Moses was not called to lead the people of Egypt, lead the people of Israel out of Egypt when he was in Egypt. It took a period of time of Moses to being broken to where God says you are now being...